Uh, for the inaugural, I would like to invite uh, our guest, uh, uh, Dr. K. Sri Devi Daru. She is IAS officer, director of uh, municipal administration. Madam, I request you to come to the dais. I request Muril to honor the with bouquet of, with the flower of bouquet. Uh, thank you, Madam, for uh, accepting our invitation uh, in spite of our busy schedule. And uh, I know that assembly session is going on. Uh, I would like to really uh, thank you for taking time. Uh, now I request uh, Mr. Sunil Dave, Central Pollution Control Board. Uh, please come on to the dais. Uh, I really thank you in spite of our busy schedule because of the Delhi problem. Uh, right now, uh, the, there's a lot of pressure for the CPCB. Still, I would like, I am very happy to say that you are with us. <coughs> now, I invite uh, Ms. Sachi from the BMGF to come on to the dais. Thank you. Uh, with all your support, we are able to do this. Yeah. You cannot play that side. Okay, thank you. Uh, just I would like to brief you uh, the purpose of this uh, workshop and uh, what we expect from this workshop and also how we structure for the shop. I will not be taking more than two minutes. Uh, you are aware that recognizing the importance and urgency for the sanitation, Government of India launched SBM on 2nd October 2014. Uh, more than 30 lakh individual household latrines and 1 lakh community toilets were already constructed. It's a very good achievement, and uh, it's a very good beginning for the sanitation. But at the same time, in the, in the sanitation value chain, apart from the construction of toilets, the collection, treatment, and disposal of separate septics is equally important in achieving the objectives stated in the policy statement. The fetal sludge and septic management has been accorded low priority, and there is poor awareness about uh, its impacts on the health and environment. There is also limited knowledge on the technology and operational experiences. The present practice is to remove the sludge from the septic tank and dump it as per the convenience as it is not regulated or enforced. You will also appreciate by 2020, uh, more than 1.45 crore toilets uh, will be there in the urban area alone. And uh, we may be ha solving one problem that is a very hygienic and uh, sanitation at the site, but at the same time, evacuation of the septase and disposing the septase in the huge quantities will become a problem. Recognizing these facts, Government of India had formulated national policy on the fetal sludge and septase management during 2017. For effective implementation of the policy, the active involvement and support from the various stakeholders is necessary. Apart from the central government, central and state uh, urban departments and the ULBs, the role of the CPCB and SPP uh, State Pollution Control Board are also equally important as they are vested with the certain mandatory functions under the provisions of Water Act and Air Act and EP Act. Recognizing the importance of the Pollution Control Board and its uh, their role, this national workshop is being organized for all the state pollution control boards and CPCB by the NFSSM Alliance with the support of uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. The workshop is structured to share the policy and how it is being implemented in certain states, learnings from the international experience to share the le learnings from the international experience, and also learnings from the partners who are, dis who are doing some sort of work in the different states. The objective of the poli uh, policy in achieving the sanitation to protect the environment and reduce the health burden. The program is structured with good scope for discussions at the end of this section. And I would like to close with one last sentence. Uh, the workshop is intended to uh, create some sort of a roadmap uh, what the PCBs would like to do. I would like to say your suggestions for next step are very important for the success of this workshop. With this small uh, briefing about uh, the intent, uh, what is the object of the workshop, and I'm happy to say that around uh, 15 PCBs of uh, officers have participated. 
Uh, with this, I would like to uh, close by uh, brief uh, about the welcome. Now I invite uh, Ms. Sakshi uh, from the BMGF to address the gathering. Good morning. On behalf of the National Fecal Sludge and Septage Management Alliance, the NFSSM Alliance, I would like to welcome you all to this workshop. This alliance was set up last year and brought together institutes and organizations working in the field of urban sanitation to drive the discourse on FSSSM in India. We, the alliance, have been working with all key stakeholders to move the FSSM agenda forward. Unfortunately, the national government has recognized this as a priority with the launch of the national policy early this year. The recognition is now percolating to the states with each state drafting its FSSM policy. But the work is far from done. Less than 30% of the fecal waste of our cities is treated. And while some of our cities have sewer networks, most cities are not covered and most areas are not covered by these networks. They rely on on-site containment systems. Uh, a lot of that waste is being dumped untreated into our environment. The reliance on on-site sanitation systems is going to increase with the increase in urbanization rates in India. It is thus even more critical now than ever to make sure that states and cities are prioritizing implementation of FSSM um, before this turns into another public health emergency like that we're facing in Delhi today. All stakeholders play an important role to translate this political will into practice and to ensure the waste of our cities gets treated. Even as states are drafting the policy, we still have less than 10 operational fecal sludge treatment plants in India. For this to change, uh, informed and engaged regulatory authorities, especially pollution control boards, can make an important change and difference and provide an enabling ecosystem for implementation of technology solutions. Each of us can be instrumental in bringing about this change, and we're here today uh, to discuss what role all of you can play uh, to achieve this goal and how the NFSSM Alliance can support you. We hope all of us can go back today with clear action items so that each of us can together move forward to the goal of five to 5,000 fecal slush treatment plants over the next five years. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Sashiaru. Uh, now I invite uh, Mr. Sunil Dave from CPCB to address the gathering. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is my privilege to be here, being the one of the person uh, for inaugural address and be a participant in this national level workshop of uh, one of the emerging issue which we are recognizing uh, in, a, in a short period of time. In fact, this assignment has been given me last night and uh, ever since I kept on searching the information about what is this fecal sludge and septage management. Uh, I would like to impress this audience here what is the gravity of the issue in terms of the what potential it has. If I say so, what I mean is the India, if I look into the urban situation, what is the urban area? About 500 cities in India has the population more than 10 lakhs or so. I mean, they are class one city uh, and uh, <coughs> about another 500 cities considered to be class two cities. This all together comprises of 16% of national population. Whereas the sewage generation and the, so, so does the sludge from that uh, sewage or septic would be of that amount. 
and unfortunately the scene what um, Dr. Bhattabhara Subban has already narrated is not been taken care of. So the role of the local bodies is to develop the facilities and the role of the SPCBs and the CPCBs to bring up the guidelines how to regulate the system or the facilities being developed by them. We at the centre level believe that the regulations will be enforced only once the, there is a determination by the local authorities and the proper facilities are developed. I would will, I will like to mention also that the, uh, I, in, in case, because I happen to be one of the officers dealing in the Ganga action plan and uh, I can understand the fecal sludge, though we have been talking about the industrial pollution in respect of the Ganga, but the fecal sludge or the sewage is the main cause of the river Ganga pollution. So the what is the faith of the river Ganga could be the another scenario in the country also. So may I request these participants to have active participation in development what the uh, Dr. Bala was saying to us to develop the guidelines and regulations so as to we can we can face this challenge and the emerging situation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir, for your uh, uh, opening remarks and uh, highlighting the importance of the fetal slides. And uh, um, I will be very happy. I am sure that CPCB will all support uh, uh, in this endeavor in achieving the identified uh, uh, serious pollution problem. Thank you. Uh, now I invite uh, uh, Dr. K. Sri Devidaru, IAS Director of Municipal Administration, for give the uh, inaugural address. Good morning, everyone. Only one? Thank you very much. Uh, today, I think it's a bright day in uh, Hyderabad, and you all are uh, enjoying the city. It's one of the most uh, comfortable times in the city when you have uh, temperatures which are just optimal for uh, effective uh, productivity. So I think that uh, today morning, we are dealing with such an important subject. With the, uh, this kind of an environment, definitely the receptivity will be higher. Isn't it? Only two again? <laughs> Thank you so much. In fact, when we start uh, normal workshops, we go into clapping sessions so that everybody is uh, uh, jovial and also energetic to take in. Can we go in for a small clap so that uh, our stress levels are down? As you all are aware, uh, Telangana, you may or may not be aware, Telangana state is 50% urban population. And uh, we have uh, around, uh, by 2011 uh, census, it was 38.8% uh, urban. And when we had uh, Samagra Kutumba survey, we had done a one-day survey of all the households in, uh, when the state was formed. And it has come to the notice that it's uh, around 42 to 43% are urban. So when the state is progressing in the urban areas, there is also a uh, need for uh, focusing on urban issues. So alongside the uh, Swachh Bharat mission that has been launched by Government of India, Telangana also takes a lot of pride uh, in uh, initiatives uh, to bring uh, the livability inde indices high. I also make, make the cities and our towns much more livable. In fact, we may not count in terms of uh, the population first year or second year uh, towns, but we have large number of urban uh, habitations, which we are calling uh, Nagar Panchayats. We have uh, different levels of cities where I'm giving you a scenario because you need to understand that in this kind of a situation, what are the solutions that we can actually bring in in terms of sanitation? But when we talked about uh, Swachh Bharat, there were almost uh, uh, less than two towns which were uh, open defecation free when we started off. And uh, we used to go by a something called full open defecation. This is what was there more, more often in the towns. Even for that matter, in the city like Hyderabad, open defecation was a far away dream. But however, we have taken it as a challenge. In the last two years, we worked relentlessly 
to identify the uh, uh, hot spots for open defecation, we plugged them. We have constructed 1,50,000 toilets, open uh, individual toilets. We also constructed uh, community toilets and public toilets. In fact, our honorable minister was very keen that we should also have toilets for women, so that when women go in, uh, go out for market or any other uh, requirement, they should not uh, feel the pain of not being, ha not having a facility. So we took up onto ourselves, and then by August 14th, or 15th of this uh, year, we have uh, given a preliminary notification in all our ULBs that we are open defecation free. That is, we have given. Uh, provided the facility from the civil administration point of view, that uh, municipal administration, that every town has a facility, either it is individual or public or uh, community toilets. But the stark reality that is facing us today is that when we talked about uh, completely avoiding defecation in open, but we are faced with a situation where our toilets, which we have uh, constructed uh, t uh, twin pit toilets, when they have to be cleaned, or the golfing machines have to take them out, these vehicles are so erratic, they do it in the night, they pick up the septage, and then they uh, uh, discharge it in uh, water bodies or open areas and whatever. So uh, whatever effort has gone in for Swachh Bharat in terms of open defecation free, we are actually releasing the whole thing without people's notice into uh, water bodies or open areas. That means we are having a much difficult situation than what it was when it was uh, uh, defecating in open. So this becomes a major challenge for us, especially the, uh, the fecal sludge, the gray water. This is the uh, number one issue that is uh, the challenge that is facing us now. Second thing is actually the government of uh, Telangana has taken a large scale initiative where every household in uh, Telangana will be having a uh, tab piped water connection to their houses. So it is by 2018, uh, June, every household will be getting at least 135 LPCD of water. So this is going to be another challenge with surplus water that is available and the gray water that is going to be generated uh, because of uh, this, as well as the fecal sludge that I mentioned earlier, it becomes much more important to ponder upon what is the initiative that the state is taking for uh, uh, septage management or fecal sludge uh, treatment and other things. In this context, I would like to impress upon that uh, we have started some uh, innovations. We are exploring or validating number of technological options that are available. In one such case, uh, we have uh, ASCII and uh, the Belinda Gates uh, Foundation together we have come up with a solution for uh, Warangal city. Warangal is our uh, second largest city in Telangana, where uh, it's around 1 million population. And there we have tried uh, the complete uh, service chain, where we worked on uh, the vehicles that are actually carrying the septage. They need to be enrolled, and uh, there is a regulation that is uh, put in place so that they do not just discharge it anywhere and uh, everywhere, but there is a method of uh, uh, discharging and then we are also now inaugurating a fecal slash treatment plan in in uh, Warangal on the lines of some of the cities that they have already have now. So this is one uh, delocalized or uh, uh, a small initiative that has gone in in Telangana state uh, thanks to our partners. These learnings are being taken up and then we are coming with a regulation uh, policy, fecal slash uh, uh, treatment policy for the whole of the state. The draft is already under preparation, and then uh, with government's approval, it is going to be uh, bringing in. However, for Telangana, for Warangal, the council has taken the resolution, uh, issued a resolution, and got this thing in. So these are the initiatives. But however, we also have other kinds of uh, uh, experiences that we have uh, pulled together. For example, when uh, GIZ was working as for, uh, working as uh, technological partners for uh, technical partners for Telangana state, we came up with uh, comprehensive integrated city sanitation plans. We also have developed around uh, 10 city sanitation plans uh, where we are working on every aspect. It's not just uh, a particular uh, uh, issue, but the complete uh, sanitation of the cities are brought in. We are also actually looking at uh, developing uh, DPRs for all of the cities for uh, storm drain uh, management as well as 
sewerage uh, treatment, uh, uh, underground drainage system. But you all are aware, friends, that uh, having to get an underground treatment uh, or an underground, uh, underground drainage system, it not only involves a will, but also it involves a lot of fund, uh, funding that is necessary. So we are looking at this option. While today in Telangana state, we have only 51, I think 51.5% underground uh, drainage available, uh, including city and another four towns. But if you have to bring in all the 73 towns under uh, underground drainage system, I think it is next to almost impossible in, in even in uh, raising funds in a short time. So we are looking at this kind of an initiative that we brought in, in uh, Warangal. And then we are going to actually, now that we have some proof of concept in our own state, we are, uh, we are thinking about bringing in similar initiatives and working out in uh, next bigger towns like Karimnagar and others where we can actually look at how we can operationalize uh, these innovations in our, uh, in our uh, state. But however, we would like to impress upon that when we think about uh, uh, pollution, it's just not air pollution because you all are, uh, any news channel you open today, uh, it's only Delhi and uh, the um, fog that is there and then everybody talking about how to get out of this issue. But we should also think about if you are not solving this problem, of uh, fecal starch treatment today, maybe down the line we will be facing similar situation because you all are much more aware, you are experts there. Uh, the fecal sludge is much more uh, uh, dangerous in terms of its uh, biological uh, concentrations and uh, uh, its chemical compositions that are there. So if they are lef left out in open without uh, regulation or without having a treatment plan in plan, definitely we will be facing much more severe situation and uh, health hazard which, uh, which is going to cause heavily on the states. So I think uh, that this is a, a very opportune time for us all to think in, the, in these lines that we, are, we will not face a difficult situation in future, especially a kind of a public health hazard that, uh, that this can bring. In fact, uh, the air pollution may be a lesser evil when compared to this in, in a way, but both are not comparable. But uh, let us uh, uh, at least focus and give the due attention to this subject as much at is, as it is required so that we do not face another uh, uh, challenge in the future. Thank you very much, uh, the organizers, for inviting me for this workshop and also sharing our experiences. I look forward uh, that uh, the people who are here are uh, adequately sensitized on this subject. And when we go back, we will be bringing in a lot of initiatives in different parts of the country. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam, for your uh, uh, proper setting about this workshop and the need for decentralized uh, treatment system and its gravity and uh, what is the important role to be played by the, all the stakeholders. Uh, I would like to really thank you for uh, giving your valuable uh, inputs on this occasion. Uh, now, uh, would I request, uh, to ha we have a small video about the Varangal. Uh, she has already mentioned about the Varangal initiative. Just I would like to show you a small video clipping about the Varangal, the initiative taken by uh, on this uh, fetal sludge management. Any growing city in India faces pressing sanitation problems. Varangal is one such city with a difference. In old days when there were no bathrooms here, from last uh, one, 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 one and a half year, we have a little bit changed. Now, many, anywhere we can go, there are bathrooms, they are there. Public toilets, Chalamande water, Vailalo Mandi Vartu Untaro. Varangal has transformed itself into a model city in sanitation. Like most states in the country, the state of Telangana also uh, has huge challenges. The government of late has now really started focusing a lot on improving the sanitation. Administrative Staff College of India is a research and a training institute that informs uh, public policy. The city of Varangal approached us and they want us to fix and also find appropriate solutions for their sanitation problems. ASCII conducted on-ground research on the major problems of sanitation in Barangal. And this was used to design a solution to its problems. This is how we came up with uh, 
a city sanitation model a model that cuts across every aspect of sanitation value chain in a model sanitation city every citizen must have the right to access a clean sanitary toilet at home and in public places ASCII first began its work on public toilets. The next step that Warangal did, and this is applicable for any city for that matter, is to identify locations where these facilities are needed. And that's where we need a certain amount of research, we need to understand the footfall data, and that's what we did. We went through a, a completely different model vis-a-vis -vis many other cities, is to go for public-private partnership format. The PPP model incentivized the private sector by giving them land from the government and a way to generate revenue from a pay-per-use model. This led to better design public toilets. The Apache people have put a ramp for them. There is a separate entrance for ladies. There is a ladies. soap, and hand wash, dust pin, और नैपकिन्स ऐसा बहुत कुछ अच्छा सुविधा किया है। Meanwhile, the government used well-structured service agreements to hold private operators accountable. This ensured design, maintenance, and usage were at the forefront of public toilets. But it didn't stop there. This model continuously held private operators accountable through constant monitoring. Municipal sanitary inspectors make weekly visits, and citizen feedback is recorded. So what were some of the things the feedback data revealed? One key finding, usage of the public toilet was heavily skewed with respect to gender. We've been collecting gender segregated data in all the public toilets and we realized that the footfalls by women were extremely low. If 600 men were using, only 10 women were using in these toilets. That led us to think about uh, exclusive toilets for women as we call the she toilets. Which are taken care of by a women caretaker, which have menstrual hygiene related facilities and which are located in locations which are convenient. There was no one in the bathroom, there was no one in the bathroom, there was no one in the bathroom. They were doing good work with them. Learning from Varangal experience, the state government of Telangana has asked all the cities to work towards building she toilets in their cities. Varangal has also provisioned toilets at fuel stations throughout the city, an initiative being scaled across the state of Telangana. Having made available public toilets, the big challenge was to make individual household toilets available in a seamless way. A number that was you know, uh, initiated by the municipality earlier, but people are not aware of it. So what ASCII with the support of uh, you know, municipality has done is, you know, we have uh, carried out a campaign on the number. So the citizen, any citizen doesn't have a toilet, can make a call. ASCII helped Varangal establish a dedicated government sanitation helpline called S-Line for citizens to apply for toilet subsidies and post queries on sanitation. To prevent any backlog on S-Line, it also helps set up a project implementation unit headed by the additional commissioner that meets once a week to clear out subsidy applications. Like in public toilets, a constant feedback loop is maintained so efficiency remains strong. S-Line is another success story from Varangal being scaled across the state of Telangana. The S-Line has mobilized 3.5 crores of toilet subsidies for the benefit of 10,000 households living in Varangal. And good to say and proud to say, 70% of the calls made by the women. There were a lot of problems with the toilet. There were a lot of problems with the toilet. When you gave the application, there was a toilet in 10 days. हम कभी नहीं सोचे मैं मो ये देते हो का समग्र प्रणाली का तैयारी इसको ना मो ओडी ऑफिस हम लोग पब्लिक टॉयलेट्स गानी अदेविदंगा डेमोस्टिक टॉयलेट्स गानी अदेविदंगा इनसेंटरी इनसेंटरी के संबंधी चीज़ नहीं गानी ये वन्ने उड़ा गतम लोग को 25 परसेंट मात्र में उन्हें दी दीनी ओ का ओ का क राष्ट्र प्रबंधों में का निर्दल्त होगा नहीं, वो का क्रमबद्ध करना चाहिए से इपढ़ की वो को 50 परसेंट टेबल पूर्ति जेड़ देने जरूरी नहीं। Alongside access, the containment systems of toilets such as pits and septic tanks must be built to standard. Citizens have to build either septic tanks or leach pits. These containments have to be well designed in order to ensure that the containment do not cause pollution in the neighbourhood, and that's when the role of mason training becomes very critical. I have been training for 
అది వరకు ఒకటే గుంట ఉండే ఆశకోళ్ళు ట్రైనింగ్ ఇచ్చినాక తర్వాత మాకు రెండు రెండు గుంటలు అవి ఆశకోళ్ళు ట్రైనింగ్ వారం రోజులు ఇచ్చిండ్రు దాని ప్రకారంగా మేము కడతా అంటే పబ్లిక్స్ చాలా మంచిగా ఉన్నదని అంటాను Even with Mason trainings there is a feedback loop through S line where the citizen is able to report problems and the impanel list of masons becomes accountable Once set up these containment systems must be regularly desludged in a systematic manner and then transported to appropriate treatment facilities We are actually the first city in the country to come up with a regulatory framework for uh, storage and transportation of fecal sludge matter. So now we actually have registered partners who associate with us for capturing, uh, gathering and transporting uh, fecal sludge. Varangal has licensed its private desludging operators to make them a part of a formal system. Train them on health and safety regulations to protect them. and employed innovative technologies such as fsm trackers and gps to monitor the sludge collected fsm tracker an oka app icharu dantlo mem prathi roju enter chestunam ekkada work chesinamo enta quantity collect chesinamo once a city knows exactly how much quantity of fecal sludge is being collected it must create treatment plants in varangal two treatment plants are on their way in one zone a fecal sludge treatment plant is conceptualized which is based on the biological treatment and leading to clean water as well as fertilizer production the other plant which is coming in the other half of the city is based on biomethanation which is treating both municipal solid waste as well as a fecal waste and this biomethanation has a commercial value and that's why the city chose to opt for public private partnership toilets ki sambandhinchi first septic tank nunchi modalu vedthe మొత్తం టాయిలెట్ పూర్తయి అక్కడ ఉన్నటువంటి వ్యర్థ పదార్థాలు ఏవైతే ఉంటాయో దాన్ని తీసుకెళ్లి ఏ విధంగా ట్రీట్మెంట్ చేయాలి ఏ విధంగా డిస్పోజ్ చేయాలన్న విధానంలో ఒక కొత్త పద్ధతిని కొత్త ఉరవడిని సృష్టించడమే కాకుండా దేశంలోనే ఇది మొదటిసారిగా ప్రవేశపెట్టడం జరిగింది వరంగల్లో we had competitions we had campaigns we had marches we also had several campaigns involving school children and we thought that there was you know citizens were in, interested in creating uh, awareness varangal has been a fantastic journey Uh, and it has been so because of the various innovations that the city has uh, been readily adopting we are actually the ideal size where what we do is easily replicable because we already have a framework and a lot of cities are in this size we are taking it to andhra pradesh we are taking it to other parts of telangana and also we are uh, taking it to in fact other countries we selected the uh, varangal city as a as a role model in this regard to ensure that all the initiatives uh, in terms of sanitation are adopted and demonstrated at a single location so that other towns and cities in the state can learn from those uh, initiatives the varangal model tells us that to plan for complete sanitation solutions for any city it is imperative to plan across the sanitation value chain the model uses deep government engagement on ground data private sector involvement and innovative technologies It also keeps its citizens at the forefront. This is the model sanitation city. Thank you. This shows what is the power in the stakeholder consultation why we viewed this video. Uh, how the journey has been taken in uh, having the engagement with the different stakeholders and how it has resulted in the positive results uh, i thank all the dignitaries on the dais for uh, supporting this workshop and sharing their uh, valuable experiences uh, now we will go for the next session yes thank you thank you once again now i invite professor v srinivas chari from ast uh, he will be taking the session on the overview of the fssm thank you sir uh i think uh, before we 
uh, get into a little bit of understanding, a common understanding of what we are discussing and uh, what the national policy is all about. I think uh, it's important to set the context from, uh, <coughs> from the partner's perspective. In fact, uh, everybody, uh, there are few abbreviations that are thrown at you, so we need to be very clear about these abbreviations. FSSM is uh, Fecal Sludge and Septage Management. Uh, many of us, we assume that all of us know about it, may not be. So the second important abbreviation that you heard is National NFSSM. It's a National Fecal Sludge and Septage Management Alliance. So why uh, this alliance was con formed? I think uh, I thought uh, probably Mr. Krishnan is the best person to talk about it at some point. But I think uh, just to break the ice, I thought I will take the opportunity to basically uh, a host of uh, uh, institutions, non-governmental institutions, academic institutions have come together uh, and they recognize that we need to really, like uh, Sakshi ji said, before we hit a crisis on this whole issue of uh, septage management or wastewater management, we need to really resolve it and we need to provide solutions, both technological as well as process related solutions and they came together under a broad al a format of alliance, we meet regularly, and we have subgroups, and these subgroups actually one uh, are looking at different aspects of sanitation. One is a technology-related subgroup, then there is another subgroup looking at financing, there's a third subgroup looking at behavior change. So we have these alliance partners work with various state governments, various uh, uh, technology providers, uh, both public and private, we work with uh, CSIR laboratories, we work with some of the eminent institutions, and most importantly, we work with uh, uh, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Earlier, it used to be called as the Ministry of Urban Development. And uh, we also discussing with Ministry of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change, and now uh, CPCB also is uh, part of these uh, conversations. So one of the stakeholders that uh, we thought it's very important to bring, on, bring them on board and uh, also share uh, some of the positive results that are emerging because eventually the regulatory agency has to validate them, has to uh, test or rather check whether this is going in the right direction. And very importantly, the regulatory agency has a very important function under the Act, which is an advisory function. Often we look at only the regulatory function. We tend to not look at uh, advisory functions. So the PCBs can also play that advisory role. And this workshop is basically to have a common understanding of how to deal with this uh, a critical issue of environmental concern confronting uh, India today is a whole issue of septage management, the waste coming out of the septic tanks and pits. Now, this alliance uh, we will discuss at a later point. Uh, there are a whole lot of uh, expertise is available as part of this alliance. For example, uh, key partners like CDD, uh, who is going to talk, Shishanka and uh, uh, Boda, which is another uh, Tenzing is going to talk about. A lot of technological developments, not just theoretical, but actually, actually projects on the ground. In fact, they're going to, uh, in fact, quite a bit of uh, learning happens through the field visits conducted to Devanehali project in uh, Karnataka. And now many projects are coming up uh, in across the country. We also have Center for Science and Environment. A number of uh, partners are part of this alliance and a lot of partners are sitting at the back and we can interact during the tea break. So just like to uh, inform all of us that it is uh, a concerted effort of collective effort of a number of partners, highly committed and highly qualified and technically competent so that we can work together and create a right kind of ecosystem. So having said that, let me just uh, uh, quickly bring a common understanding uh, in this hall about the subject that we are dealing with. Following that, following this discussion, we would also just go outside the country Look at what countries like Malaysia, countries like uh, Bangladesh, and even Western countries are doing about this whole waste management. I'm not talking about solid waste management. So we have, in fact, uh, Mr. Dorai and uh, Mr. Rajiv are here to share. They have actually flown in just to share their experience of how other countries are looking at in terms of uh, this whole subject that we are talking about. It's not just an Indian phenomenon. 
but it's actually an international phenomenon and they found some solutions, they found a roadmap and we need to really look at what are the positives and negatives. Then following uh, international experiences, we deep dive and as PCBs we are very, very conscious of the technology. We are very, very concerned about are we putting the right technology because I have dealt with the PCBs uh, I think uh, f almost like 15, 20 years back I used to, I've started my career with the uh, regulatory uh, side and then moved to more of urban sector. So the biggest concern when we used to go for consent was what is the technology? What are the unit operations? So how do we deal with it? So I think uh, there's a lot of uh, technological solutions will be discussed. Uh, Mr. Sheshanka is going to take us through what are the options, what are the positives, what are the advantages and what are the concerns that they have experienced over a period of time. So I think that's a very critical session that you would be going through. And then we look at uh, some of the state level actions. I must say that Sri Devigaru has already indicated a lot of state governments are excited about this in terms of from urban development perspective. Uh, Telangana is one, Andhra Pradesh, Orissa, uh, Madhya, uh, uh, Maharashtra, and a lot of states, Tamil Nadu is a thought leader, all of them are actually moving ahead and they are actually deploying resources. So now I think you need to hear the story from an urban development perspective, how states are uh, forging ahead in this space so that you get an idea. Sometimes being in the state, we don't know what other departments are doing. So this, this session, now this panel is going to be basically to give you a sense of what's happening on the urban development side and how city governments and state governments are trying to fix this sanitation problems. And then we look at the panel discussion on, uh, from a regulatory perspective, we have uh, uh, Mr. Dave from uh, CPC, of course, and also some of the state PCB colleagues would be sharing their own experience of how they look at this FSM as a as an important uh, subject area. And then we close with a very clear, concrete roadmap. In fact, uh, Mr. Sheshanka and also Mr. Krishnan is going to talk about opportunities. This alliance is going to assist you in organizing field visits and taking you to different locations and. Uh, you can actually visit some of the facilities that are being built and then we'll take it forward. So this is a snapshot of the program that because I think it's important that what the day looks like, I thought I would uh, tell you. Now, let me just uh, kick start by <coughs> uh, starting with uh, fundamentals. And I would not, uh, I will stick to my time, uh, but at the same time it's important to have fundamentals right. So these are the terms that we often, uh, most of you are environmental science, or environmental engineering background. And when I studied civil engineering, even in India and abroad, I was never taught about this. I was, ta I was taught about sewerage design, I was taught about hydraulics, and I was taught about wastewater treatment. Some of the options that are prevalent in India and not only in India and elsewhere are actually out of the textbooks many a times. So some of the terms like leach pits. Leach pits are basically uh, a simple aerobic structures where the waste would flow from the households and then stay here, gets degraded, and then we have two pits, and then we leave behind one pit for a while and then start using the second pit will, till it gets digested, and then the second pit is used, and the famous uh, uh, experience or uh, the picture of uh, Mr. Parameshwaran Nair, uh, secretary, drinking water and sanitation, getting into a pit, scooping it out, uh, that this pit is safe, if it is managed well, is a good example that leach pits can work in certain conditions and we have a whole lot of leach pits, twin pit toilets in our country, which is quite very popular. The second option of sanitation provision is septic tanks. This is basically anaerobic in nature, uh, uh, where the waste flows from the household and you have different versions and different varieties. You have baffles, single baffle, multiple baffles. The sludge gets settled, gets digested. The supernatant, the scum can go out and supernatant once it reaches a particular level, gets out of the septic tank and then it can join the soak pit or it typically 99% of the time it joins the nalas or drains. We don't have culture of soap pits most of the places in our country. So these drains, the grey water, so-called grey water is getting contaminated with the 
overflow of the septic tanks and that makes it a little more uh, a sort of a cocktail which needs attention. Now these are the two options. Now there are a vari variety of variants of this, but you often hear terms like sewage. Sewage is nothing but the waste, liquid waste coming out of the uh, household, both from the bathroom as well as from the WC. This sewage gets through a network of pipes called sewerage systems. So the sewerage is nothing but a network of pipes carrying the sewage and at the downstream it gets treated which is called sewerage treatment plant. We also use the term called sullage. Sullage is nothing but grey water, that is a water coming from kitchen, bathrooms, which is generally not goes, it doesn't go through the, uh, the, the septic tank, it's bypassed because it has detergents, it has oils, so generally you're not supposed to put it in the, in the septic tanks. So it's collected directly in a typical Indian context, small and medium towns is gray water is carried in the drains provided for storm water. Would you agree? Yeah. Then the, the, the terms that we are currently using is septage. The septage or the fecal or uh, fecal waste is basically the, the, the matter that gets accumulated in these septic tanks and partially digested and it gets digested over a period of time but also there's a lot of fresh uh, fe feces in this particular toilets not completely digested. Once it gets full, the private operator comes and takes it out and then dumps it and that's what the opening session is all about explaining the, the challenges of inappropriate disposal of this whole waste. So this matter is what we the subject of our conversation. In India we may think, and this is not an Indian phenomenon, almost like 14 years back when I went to Australia in some of the small and medium towns as part of the WSP, Water and Sanitation Program, I collected and I scanned and retained it, now it's coming to use. This was a municipality which was actually in Australia regulating septic tanks. So there's a council which in fact the, the S-line concept of Varangal which you heard in fact was borrowed from what I vaguely remember at the time and collected this data this called they have a safe septic helpline. In fact, that's, that's how the, this concept of S-line came. So this is a dedicated line. This is not from, uh, you know, India. This is not from just, we may think it's not from Nepal. It's not from only South Asian countries. It's coming from the so-called advanced countries. So they are seriously thinking, uh, looking at a disruptive ways of solving sanitation. That is, solve the problem where it falls, which is on-site treatment. Instead of carrying it in pipes, very expensive pipes, take it hundreds of kilometers or couple of kilometers away at least, outside the city, put in a lot of chemicals, put in a lot of energy, treat it, and put another layer of tertiary treatment, bring it to a reasonable level, and again bring it back to the city in the name of recycling. It's the most stupid engineering in a way, which was taught to me. So the world over are seriously looking at why do I need to weigh, I mean the way solid waste is moving in the right direction, decentralize it. Instead of carrying the waste all the way, 30, 40 kilometers out, put it in a waste to energy plant or composting plant, why should I do it? Take the waste from one location, throughout the city to a single point. It's capital intensive, energy intensive, high O&M cost. The wastewater sector is also started looking at it in a very, very different way, in a disruptive way. It's not a suboptimality, it's a different way of thinking. Generally we think decentralized uh, solutions are suboptimal solutions, need not be. If telephone system has not gone decentralized, we wouldn't have holding a telephone. In fact, they went from a wired network to wireless. Only because of that, all of us are holding a phone. If it had gone in a typical sewerage way of putting cables all over, probably even after 100 years we wouldn't have delivered telephone. So they went in a very disruptive way of taking out cables and converting into wireless. So can we think of, that's a model which 
I think uh, the world is looking at, and I think we need to also start looking at it. And that's what India has started looking at it. Just a quick snapshot of 2011. Please understand that we are on on-site sanitation. All our urban areas are on on-site sanitation by, by legacy. We don't have sewerage systems. We don't have pipe networks. We have about 30% of the urban system is on pipe systems. Rest is all on, on site. That is the two options that we discussed. What are those options? Septic tanks and pits and some variants of it. So the whole urban ecosystem are on on-site sanitation bulk of it and we have to live with it we can't just pull it out and put as sewerage systems even if you want to so given that context just to give you an example andhra pradesh out of 110 towns some of our colleagues are here from apa only five towns have partial sewerage systems The data collected <coughs> by, uh, in fact, uh, many of the research organizations, including I think SEPT has collected the data, found that except for five cities across the country, 100% sewerage is there. Rest of the 4,000 plus municipalities and systems have parsh very, very predominantly on on-site sanitation. We have about 4,041 urban local bodies, municipalities. Usme panch jo hain completely end-to-end -end sewerage systems. Or madam ne bhi bataya ki it's common in Telangana, it's common in Andhra Pradesh, and it's common in most of our uh, cities and towns. So <clears throat> the question that often confronts us, and I'm just uh, sharing in a very brief way why we are not looking at centralized systems why world is not looking at centralized systems anymore or at least thinking differently because of two reasons and multiple reasons but two reasons one is uh, it requires enormous amount of water kitna pani chahiye sewerage ke liye minimum 150 उससे ज़्यादा पानी पर कैपिटा चाहिए लीटर्स एलपीसीडी बोलते हैं 150 प्लस एलपीसीडी पीने के लिए पानी नहीं है इवन इफ यू पुट अ सिवरेज सिस्टम यू कैन नॉट गेट स्कोरिंग वेलोसिटी दैट्स व्हाई द सीपीएचओ नॉर्म्स विल नॉट प्रिस्क्राइब अनलेस एंड अंटिल यू हैव अ वेरी सफिशिएंट नंबर ऑफ सफिशिएंट क्वांटिटी ऑफ सिवरेज सिस्टम्स दैट्स नंबर 1 नंबर 2 it's prohibitively expensive. In fact, Mr. Stenson will probably speak at a later stage. The cost comparators, huge difference between decentralized systems and centralized systems. And that's the reason we are seriously looking at, and Swachh Bharat rightly so looked at, and I would like all of you to look at, just go to Swachh Bharat website and see the dashboard. It's a, it's a, it's a fabulous counter. The counter is basically how many toilets are getting built. And I just took a screenshot just for your, uh, we have built 40 lakh, <coughs> 4 million toilets. And it's getting, and more and more. What are these toilets? Are they connected to sewerage systems? No. They are on-site toilets. Quite a bit are septic tanks, as well as leach pits. And we have public toilets and community toilets, more than 2.2 lakh public toilets and community toilets. All these public toilets and community toilets, are they connected to sewer systems? No. They also have septic tanks. So we have basically, we are retaining this whole feces, trying to digest partially and then evacuating it and dumping it inappropriately. So, so many toilets have been built in the last three and a half years, and these numbers are going to increase. What do we do with the waste coming out of this is a question that we are discussing. So, we, we are trying to solve this problem, rightly so, as ma'am said, but what about this rest of this?
It's all red right now. Thanks to private sector interventions and disorganized private sector, they are able to provide service to households in terms of evacuation. कहीं छोटे गांव जाइए छोटा टाउन जाइए कहीं पे भी जाइए आपको रोड के ऊपर या खंभे के ऊपर फोन नंबर्स लिखे रहते हैं डी स्लर्जिंग सेप्टिक टैंक ऑपरेटर्स डी स्लर्ज दे आर ऑल प्राइवेट इनिशिएटिव्स टू प्रोवाइड सॉल्यूशंस इन टर्म्स ऑफ क्राइसिस ऑफ बल्किंग ऑफ दिस वेस्ट सो वॉट डू वी डू नेक्स्ट सो दिस वेस्ट गेट्स डी कैंटेड बाई द म्यूनसिपैलिटीज और द प्राइवेट सेक्टर they don't often wear personal protective equipment which is a requirement under manual scavenging act of 2013 and then they dispose we have evidence of couple of cities we have videos don't want to sh basically to show that this problem is a live problem from most of our urban areas and we need to really solve it and that's what ministry of housing and urban affairs is now taken it on themselves to solve this problem it's contaminating uh, rivers very very precious we only talk about ganga but what happens to godavari what happens to krishna what happens to narmada what happens to many other towns so we need to fix this problem collectively in our language again some terminology for you it's important uh, rightly or wrongly we use these terms and it's called SFD, all PCBs now should start using this term. It's called shit flow diagram. How the feces is moving in the town, it's getting collected, but the waste is absolutely going out into the environment at a later stage. And that's what this red depicts. Collection is fine under Swachh Bharat. We put lot of toilets, but it's going out, and that's why it's red. and where is it going into open areas into nalas into drains and so the question before us as regulatory agencies as municipal administration as partners here is to how do we convert this red into green as much as possible which we have been ignoring for the last 60 years so 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 uh, <coughs> why do we care about septage in fact mr sheshanga is going to talk about it later the reason we concern about septage generally hum jab bhi waste water ki baat karte hain our thumb rule of cpho is it is between 220 to 300 bod that's the thumb rule aur yahan ka jo organic loading hota hai septage ka kafi research hua hai lot of literature is outside you can see it's in the order of 20000 30000 jo bulk drug का वेस्ट होता है सीओडी लेवल्स बलरग इंडस्ट्री का सेम लेवल ऑफ इंटेंसिटी ऑफ पोल्यूशन यू वुड फाइंड जो स्लॉटर हाउस का वेस्ट से निकलता है विच इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट आई रिमेंबर व्हेन आई वाज इट दैट इंस्टीट्यूट कॉल्ड ईपीटीआरआई देयर इज अ बिग इन बिग स्लॉटर हाउस कॉल्ड अल कबीर सो आई वाज गिवन दैट असाइनमेंट टू मॉनिटर एंड कम अप विद सो द नंबर्स वर माइंड बॉगलिंग दोस डेज अल कबीर का तो डेटा है वन ऑफ द मेकेनाइज्ड most mechanized and sophisticated uh, slaughter of still the waste was very very dangerous in nature for the environment so it's exactly comparison aap uske upar kar sakte hain so this waste has to be it has huge public health burden it has pathogens it can cause environmental and health impacts straight so what needs to be done we need to fix it and how do we fix it it may not be the responsibility of the pcbs all the time so that's where the municipal administration steps in and says that we are going to regulate this we are going to regulate this whole space not just the toilet but also the collection transportation treatment and disposal in terms of uh, policies in terms of uh, financing and for example uh, just give you just to bring that this is a national so just because we are holding in telangana we are not showing one or other we are just giving an example now chief minister of andhra pradesh came up with a statement that we have achieved odf but we want to achieve odf plus what is odf plus odf ke matlab open defecation free odf plus ke matlab end to end end to end not just uh, toilet provision but end to end 
even treating and disposing. And same thing with many states now. So that's where the regulatory agencies have to start looking at it. And I must, I'm very happy to inform all of you that Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs has introduced a policy. A copy of the policy is outside. And uh, we have also given you material, a pen drive which has all this material. There's a policy document is available to you. They have brought out guidelines, primers, technical options. So there is a very nice policy thrust from ministries nationally. And then they also said for there is a scheme called Amrut, like smart city, there is a scheme called Amrut. They've opened the window for under Amrut, not just for sewerage and water supply, but also for septage management. So there's a lot of funds are flowing through Amrut, almost like 20 plus states have already tied up funds for under Amrut. And I, as I said, ma'am has said, states have also issued policies. There's a lot of action, a lot of traction on the ground. They have done a lot of demand assessment. Where is the waste coming? Where is the waste going? In fact, uh, every town ka data bhi aajkal, we have this data information. So there's a lot of, uh, in terms of assessments are carried out. Regulations are being issued. DPRs, ma'am said, DPRs are being developed. And uh, I think uh, Sakshi ji said, we have projects on the ground. Small projects, 20 KL projects, 30 KL projects, five trucks, 10 trucks, equivalent. Now, the question is, is it adequate? We have 4,000 plus towns. So we need partners like PCBs also to encourage municipalities, encourage states to find solutions for the septage management. Advise them appropriately so that this scaling up from five to 10 projects to so-called 5,000 plus projects happens very quickly so that the Swachh Bharat mission would be really accomplished. Now, this is a regulation which has uh, issued by municipalities, which has uh, design and construction related issues. There's also issues related to transportation, how it should be transported. The way you have regulations of transportation of hazardous waste, Hum piche lagate hai, guardian ka piche kya hota hai? Haskem. You remember? Haskem. Haskem code is used exactly on these lines we need to have. So the city governments have introduced regulations for transportation, desludging, and personal usage of personal protective equipment. But the, the critical piece in all this is treatment options. In fact, at a later point of the discussion, the, the treatment options would be discussed. So while the chain is getting regulated, eventually it has to go somewhere. It's like a municipal solid waste, segregation, transportation, collection is all happening. Kaha jana hai? Somewhere it has to go. So that's where the technology, the solution to treat this waste is what there's enormous amount of traction in the country right now. In fact, uh, uh, there's a lot of learning came from Karnataka. There's a project uh, near uh, Bangalore called Devanelli. There's a very good example coming up. There is a project coming up in, uh, uh, there's already one project in Leh, Ladakh. There's a project coming up in quite a few in Orissa, I was told. I haven't been there. Projects in Maharashtra. There's a very state-of-the-art project is coming up in Varangal. So the technology options are, this not just India. You find this in Malaysia. You'll find this in Thailand. You will find variety of solutions in various countries. Like in, uh, Mr. Dorai will talk about it. I'm just borrowing some pictures, visuals. This is uh, a snapshot of the project. And these are reasonably inexpensive projects. Ek crore, dead crore. Your, your projects can be established with one and a half to two crores. If you go for a sewerage system, if you think of STPs, you cannot think of nothing less than 100 crores. So these are some of the advantages and these projects can be introduced in three months straight, three to six months. So these are the advantages we need to seize and that's where PCBs should start advising, in fact, municipalities, advising state governments so that we can move forward in much faster way. 
this is uh, one of the uh, international projects which is uh, I, I had an opportunity of visiting in Senegal. They convert energy and then it's through a thermal treatment and then they use the energy for recycling. Now in Warangal again one of the projects is coming up, our colleague will talk about, Arun will talk about it. This is again through a thermal route. This is, um, ma'am probably would be shortly inaugurating it uh, with uh, the government support. And uh, uh, another project coming up, this is basically liquid solid separation. Liquid is treated through a conventional treatment. The solids will go through a pyrolyzer or a pyrolysis and that energy is getting recycled. Very simple. Similar project is coming up in, uh, uh, in Narsapur. The small town, 60,000 population, what do they do? They're putting in Godavari, which is just adjacent. So instead of putting in Godavari, they should treat it and convert it into a resource. And they are developing what is called a resource park. This, the plant is only here, the small footfall, footprint. This whole area is actually the park, which is actually taking the waste from that and using in the park. So these are the opportunities that we need to, we should not let go and scale up. So I would envisage this conversation, the role of PCB should be in terms of facilitation role. Somebody said, sir, ye FSTP kaha pe aayega? Red category mein hai, red kya hai bhai? Ye to green se, super green hona chahiye. It is a green, because it's solving the problem. It should be super green, it should be straight away, it should be, uh, we, you know, it, when we come for consent to establish and consent to operate, it should be just, it's a solving the problem, your own problem. The city is actually taking that effort in solving the problem and converting into a resource. Advisory role. I mean, this is my favorite and Bala Garu would agree, is a veteran in the PCB sector. The act clearly makes provision for PCB, not just as a regulator, but also advisor. Often we give a lot of emphasis for regulatory role, but not on the advisory. But in the septage management, I think we should proactively play that advisory role so that the municipalities don't know at times how to move forward. They don't have environmental engineering background. They don't have environmental science background. They don't have concept of environmental management. So that's where the advisory role comes in. And of course, a regulatory role. How do we make sure that these FSTPs work efficiently? One failure is dangerous. So they should work efficiently. It's not just a black hole that you block, black box you put and then miracle would happen. They have to be regulated. Because success be, breeds success. One failure can kill the whole, uh, you know, the concept of septage management. So it's important that uh, PCBs can help regulate also and enable this uh, FSM ecosystem to grow faster than what's growing right now. So I think I have taken a little more longer, dragged on, but I think it's important that uh, we set the context so that everybody is on the same page. I'll stop here. Thank you very much. And if there are any questions, don't ask me. There are so many partners out there who are willing to answer. And also, all the things that Professor Jari has uh, listed there, you know, the, in terms of definitions, different type of technologies, will be available to all of you in a drop uh, in a drop box. We will be emailing you uh, because that way, at least you don't have to be only focused on what was there. You can actually review it once you guys have also gone back. Thank you. So, as per the agenda, uh, it's exactly 10:40. So we are breaking for tea right now, Balagaru. Yep. We'll break for tea and then come back and then we start with uh, what other countries' international experience looks like. Thank you.